that you get even hot now. You also understand that this is hot, huh? We get down, we can wick it down, man. A wick it down, we can wick it down, man. A wick it down, we can wick it down, man. A wick it down, I bring it, bring it down. Back to the beat, uh, back to the intro. Start at the beginning. Um, uh, well, it's it's been a, a transition, a few transitional years. Last few years, I've been mostly doing live shows with various bands in New York. I think a lot of people in New York are in like four or five bands, you know. But just the last two years, I decided to focus on solo work, which means production, a solo album that I'm working on. It's called Early Riser and uh, just traveling around doing, you know, improvisational solo shows, basically. Uh, but I grew up in California, San Francisco, got into old 60s, 70s soul, and then like 90s hip hop. Those were like my two foundations of music that I was listening to as a kid. Not a kid, but as like a teenager. And uh, always wanted to be a, a producer like DJ Premier and RZA and Jay Dilla and uh, those are probably my, my three main heroes of production um, but somehow I got into the live show things being in New York I, I joined a band uh, when I was like 19 uh, with some jazz students from the New School University and we played for years then toured with Vernon Reed and DJ Logic Band um, called Yohimbe Brothers. Uh, I don't know, it's been a long journey, but I initially wanted to just be a producer. Started doing shows for years and now I'm finally all the way back to my original plan, which is to be a producer and a solo artist. So, I don't know, I've been really fortunate the last few years, some really uh, big DJs have supported my music, like Benji B and Giles Peterson and uh, Garth Trinidad in LA. Um, and that has opened up the door for an international audience to hear my music and then bring me out. And I think the scene that enjoys what I do, it's, it's always kind of underground, but it's worldwide. So I've been able to travel all over, you know. And it's funny, everywhere I go, the people that are inviting me there are part of like some family, you know, of, of just something about the, their musical sensibility is, is similar. And the clubs have a similar vibe. And so I feel really comfortable with where I'm at right now. Uh, my main goal right now is to finish my first solo full length album. I have one EP that I did that was solo called Broken Vibes. And that was what got me most of my uh, recognition just because it was music for DJs to play but I also kind of have a you know a bunch of YouTube videos and people know that I, I'm a you know they can bring me out for shows and I'm not just a producer but this next record Early Riser is going to be my first real statement as like this is what I do this is my sound because the EP was kind of just for fun and it was only a few tracks but um uh, I'm doing well. I'm, I'm, I'm in Porto right now doing music, so it's all good. <laughs> what do you think the main differences are between, you know, the American people and the public and the European people and their appreci appreciation of, of music? Um, well, I think it maybe it used to be a little different. I feel like it, it's becoming it's less and less of a difference when it comes to kind of the internet generation, you know, you don't even have to find cool music anymore. Your friend, like so many of my friends play me stuff or send me links or just the sites that I visit. You know, it's, it's becoming where I travel halfway around the world and the people I'm hanging out with, they heard the new music that just came out last week too because we listen to the same radio show or go to the same sites. So, I feel right now people are becoming more and more in tune with, you know, all types of music, like Brazil, rare Brazilian soul and funk, all the way to like dubstep. And the scene is is becoming more unified in a way. Um, 
I would say certain audiences are more receptive. Uh, some places I go, you really have to, it takes a whole show before people loosen up and are willing to like get into it or, or you know applaud or dance. And then some cities, they're like cheering you on before you even have like played anything. <laughs> but that's just sometimes that's the venue or I don't know. New York audiences are generally stand just stand and watch. So it's always refreshing to get outside of New York. But I think New York is like that because everyone is an artist too. So you might think they don't like what you're doing, but more it's people just observing you because they're critical. Analyzing. Yeah, they're analyzing. So, and even when I think of me, when I go to shows, I basically sit and watch and like try to figure out what they're doing. So, but it's nice when you go somewhere and the vibe is so open that you feel like you can just like try stuff out which is important for me since I do a lot of improvisation. Um, but, uh, about your, well, your, your projects and your coming out, uh, what do you think the creative process was to get to where you are now and being able to put out that, that, that fully involved? It's been everything that I've done up to this point. It's You know, I didn't go to music school. I just started doing, I made beats in my basement, you know, in my dorm room in school. And then I jumped immediately to doing live shows. So my experience has been very introverted in a way and then also very, you know, extroverted as a performer. Um, and it took all these years of doing both of those things to feel comfortable, like creating my musical identity because uh, you know I've played in bands with people that didn't grow up listening to hip-hop at all they were into jazz or rock and I think all the different situations I've been in in bands has opened me up to so many different styles that now when I'm doing this record there's so many influences in it whereas if I would have started immediately from high school it would have been like just straight up hip-hop hip-hop soul but now I got more psychedelic and like rock influence stuff and uh, you know just it's different sounds and textures that I wouldn't have used before um, but you know I think I'm at a point now where I'm comfortable because at first you start off you make music you don't even want people to hear it because you're like I don't know if it's good enough but now I'm finally at a point where I want to play people my stuff and I want to do shows, I'm not, I'm nervous, but I'm not scared. So, and I feel like that's all finally come full circle where I'm like, life is short, you just gotta like, do what it is you do. I, I know what it is that I do now, you know, this is what I do, now I just gotta do it and uh, not stress about it. Uh, about your your show here, uh, you've been in here before, mm -hmm. to France, the places. Uh, what do you think will be the, the receptiveness of people? How do you think they will welcome you? Uh, I hope it's good. I think it'll, it's a good vibe here. Um, I've try. I try not to think about that too much. As at the beginning of a show, it's more. You have to be centered within. I, I like to go up there and the first song, try to just do something that's gonna make me feel like, all right, I'm ready to really do a full show. Because I, I find audiences are gonna match your uh, energy. You know, if you're up there and you're super like timid, you're looking to lose everyone immediately. So I try to like just break the ice, have like kind of a, an outgoing party-ish vibe at the beginning and then usually that can set the tone for the whole show, especially for solo shows, because if you start off and you lose the audience at the beginning, then you gotta just be up there by yourself for like an hour and no, no one cares. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it should be good. I think it's gonna be fun. <laughs>
This is Taylor McFerrin. You are watching Musical Metro. <laughs>